morning, everybody. Um, unfortunately, Maya can't be with us this morning, so Tim's stood in um, to, to play, but we've had to change the hymns, so ignore the hymns in the order of service, and we'll use the hymn book. So we begin our service with hymn number 178, hymn 178. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Good morning to you all, and a very warm welcome to our service today for the Feast of the Transfiguration. Please do be seated. Today we hear how the Holy Trinity met on sacred ground. And Christ's appearance was transfigured by the Father's glory as Christ prepared to set out on the way of the cross. As we gather together to worship God, may the Holy Spirit fill us with grace. May the light of Christ transform our lives. And may we witness to the Father's love who sends us out into the world to journey alongside those who are suffering. When Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. As he is pure, all who have grasped this hope make themselves pure. So let us confess our, this, our sins that mar his image in us. Your unfailing kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, and your justice as the great deep. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life, and in your light, shall we see light. Lord, have mercy. 
May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the glory in excelsis. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory in the... Let us pray. Father in heaven, whose Son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem, give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross that in the world to come we may see him as he is, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do be seated. A reading from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one, like a human com being, coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Shall we say the psalm antiphonically? I say in the Odd verses, one, three, five, and if you'd like to respond with two, four, and so forth, uh, and we'll omit the rest. The Lord is king, the earth may be glad thereof. Yea, the multitude of the isles may be glad thereof. Thou 
that shall go be a fire before him and burn up his enemies on every side. His lightnings gave shine unto the world, the earth saw it and was afraid. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Confounded be all they that worship carved images and that delight in vain gods. Worship him, all ye gods. For thou, Lord, art higher than all that are in the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. There is sprung up a light for the righteous, and joyful gladness for such of as true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honour and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. This is the word of the Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerus at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today the Church keeps the feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord. According to Luke, this took place eight days after Peter's declaration of Jesus' Messiahship, and after our Lord's first Passion prediction. From then on, Jesus taught the twelve that he must go to Jerusalem where he would suffer, die and be resurrected on the third day. Recently we heard the parable of the sower and we picked up on the often unnoticed part of our Lord's teaching in that parable, the importance of listening to him. Today, as we hear Luke's account of the Transfiguration, you may notice that no words of Jesus are recorded. Instead, we hear the words of God, who emphasises the importance of listening to Jesus. Our first reading today is part of Daniel's dream about four beasts, each of which represents an empire which would eventually fall as God re God's reign begins. And in today's section, 
Daniel prophesies that the coming Son of Man, the Messiah, will be given authority to reign in God's place after the fall of these four empires. In our psalm, God is praised as the creator and sustainer of all. Using similar images to Daniel, David describes the Lord as king of all, the source of joy for those who trust in him. And we heard in our second reading, Peter providing his credentials for his audience. He tells how he was an eyewitness of the events which the, church, the early church proclaimed. Peter recalls God's words affirming Christ's sonship, spoken in the presence of eyewitnesses. And we hear in our Gospel of Jesus taking the inner circle of disciples, Peter, James and John, with him to pray. Peter was the rock on whom Christ would build his church. James was the first, martyr, the first of the twelve to be martyred. And his brother John was one of the key evangelists and the beloved disciple. It's almost as if to prepare each of these for their future roles, Jesus thought it was important that they should be there to witness his transfiguration. And whilst he was praying, our Lord's face was changed and his clothes became dazzling white. This was a complete transformation of appearance, outwardly visible to these three witnesses. And before them, two great Old Testament characters appeared. Moses representing the law of the Old Covenant and Elijah representing the prophets who predicted the coming Christ. Jesus, Moses and Elijah speak of Christ's imminent departure. His exodus, unlike the exodus from Egypt led by Moses, will be established through the shedding of his blood. Then God appears in the form of a cloud or a spirit, as he had often done throughout the history of Israel. And he affirmed that which he stated at Jesus' baptism. This is my son, my chosen. Just as Jesus' baptism marked the beginning of his public ministry, his transfiguration marks the beginning of his Passover. God's voice is heard saying, listen to him. These words echo Moses' prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy that another prophet, like himself, would someday arise in Israel. That prophet Daniel spoke of in our first reading. There, in Deuteronomy, Moses says, that is the one to whom you shall listen. Jesus fulfills Moses' prophecy and receives the approval and authority of his father. No doubt the disciples were struggling with Jesus' difficult words eight days earlier about the suffering he would undergo and the cross that they were called to carry in their own lives and their future ministry. So the divine command, listen to him, endorses all that Jesus had told them. God encourages the disciples that they're on the right path following Jesus, even if the path is a difficult one.
Today, there are many voices competing for our attention. Views and opinions can be shared quickly and widely, but not all should be listened to. Some speak a great deal and say very little. And being able to say whatever we want doesn't mean to say that others have to listen. Much of what is said in the world today is harmful. Promises of instant gratification resulting in widespread suffering. You may be recent with, familiar with the recent Dove advert telling the story of Mary who was given a mobile telephone for a 12th birthday and who developed and survived an eating disorder after being exposed to the damaging content online. Modern technology enables more people than ever to have a voice. But their voice isn't always worth listening to. Modern communication has the, the potential to do great good and yet there are many who use it to speak harmful words. The wiser path might be to ignore those voices clamouring for our attention and simply focus on the one voice that truly matters, the one voice that has something important to say, the voice of Christ. In a world where we're encouraged to buy the latest must-have gadgets, a world where everybody has a voice, but not all speak from motives of love or compassion. Where people are pressurised to conform to stereotypes that are mentally, physically and emotionally, as well as spiritually, unhealthy. There is another path. Christ calls us to be transformed, not to conform. And transfiguration comes through accepting ourselves and each other for who we are. Because God accepts each of us for who we are. And he loves us despite our imperfections. And he calls us to listen to the voice of his Son. Our Lord's transfiguration is significant for three reasons. Firstly, Christ reveals his glory, offsetting the shock of his first passion prediction. Secondly, the prophets Moses and Elijah testify that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament law and the prophets. And thirdly, the Father's voice, the Chosen Son, and the cloud of the Spirit manifest the presence of the Holy Trinity. In this momentary disclosure of our Lord's divine glory, Peter's declaration as, of Jesus as the Messiah eight days earlier was confirmed. It created an opportunity for the Trinity to confirm Jesus' warning about the suffering he must undergo before he enters his permanent glory in his kingdom. But it also reminds us of the glory that we are invited to share in as we look to him and not to the world for guidance and inspiration. Our Lord invites all who listen to him to share his glory and be transformed into his likeness. Too many voices in the world today are damaging people. The voice we're encouraged to listen to is the voice of healing, hope and harmony for all people. Today as we reflect on our Lord's transfiguration, 
God urges us to listen to his son who preached acceptance, authenticity and compassion. Our Lord encourages us to live this life well. He never offered quick fixes, material solutions or false hope. But he does warn of the pain and suffering that we, like him, may go through at different times in our lives. And to counter this, he encourages us to live our lives as if we're already in his kingdom. And he reassures us that once there, we will be transfigured into his likeness. We'll shine like the sun and we'll share his glory. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Let us pray to the Father. The response to the bidding, Lord, look with favour, is Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord, look with favour. Lord of glory, it is good that we are here. In peace we make our prayer to you. In trust we confirm our faith in you. Help us to set our faces steadfastly to where you would have us to go. Lord, Look with favour. Lord of glory, look with favour on your church, proclaiming your beloved Son to the world and listening to the promptings of his Spirit.
may she be renewed in holiness, that she may reflect your glory. Lord, look with favour. Lord of glory, look with favour on the nations of the world, scarred by hatred, strife and war. May they be healed by the touch of your hand. Lord, look with favour. Lord of glory, look with favour on those in need and distress, suffering as your Son suffered, and waiting for the salvation you promise. <coughs> May the day break, and Christ the morning star bring them the light of his presence. Lord, look with favour. Lord of glory, it is good if we suffer with you so that we shall be glorified with you. According to your promise, bring all Christ's brothers and sisters to see him with their own eyes in majesty and to be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. To him be praise, dominion and worship now and for all eternity. Amen. Would you please stand? Christ will transfigure our human body and give it the form like that of his own glorious body. We are the body of Christ. We share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace.
Holy God, receive all we bring before you this day and bring us also to that radiant glory which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this day he revealed his glory before his chosen witnesses and filled with divine splendour the human flesh in which he is one with us. So he prepared his disciples to bear the scandal of the cross and showed in the church his body the same glory would be fulfilled that shone forth from him its head. And so with joyful hearts we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example, and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Taste, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us into the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. At the time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's holy gift for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <laughs> Please do be seated. There's a few things to draw your attention to in the notices. A reminder that there's no uh, lunch club or mass this coming Friday. It's the autumn break. Uh, autumn? August. The August break. 
okay, and we're being heckled. <laughs> um, if anybody's able to help Leon with the Christmas tree festival and crib festival, please ha uh, have a word with them after the service. Uh, also from Leon, um, he's organising a, a Heritage Day on Saturday the 11th of uh, November from 10 until 4.30 to look at people's historic documents and so forth, photographs and, and things like that. If you've got anything that Leon can use, um, please have a word with him. Um, and if anybody can help steward the church on the day, again, have a word with Leon. Post-school refreshments. We've now got plenty of people willing to volunteer. We're just lacking a leader. Um, so we need to identify somebody that, that can take the lead on this project, otherwise it can't happen. So if anybody feels that God might be nudging them to... Um, there's plenty of people to help the lead. There are plenty of people that are willing to do the work in the background, but we just need, that, need a named person to take the lead. This month's quiz it um, quiz uh, on this coming Thursday at the Fox Inn is being um, held to raise funds for church. Uh, Bridget, behind me, she's, she's um, organising the team, but if anybody fancies a, um, a libation and wants to go along, um, the quiz starts at 8.30. We've kindly been invited by Providence Church to join them for their talks um, over the uh, September, October, November. And the, the reading group that we discussed last, um, it was Christmas time, wasn't it, um, is now finally uh, in the final stages of planning. So the reading group, the text is going to be Rome Williams, Being Human, Bodies, Minds and Persons. And the dates are in the order of service when those um, sessions will take place. And I think that's it for notices. Would you please stand? Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Christ, the day spring from high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.